It is now time for Hello, Mr. President. It's a segment on the show that focuses solely on you and issues that you're facing within your community. We want all of us to be active participants of our own development, and it starts by holding policymakers accountable to do the things that they promise they will do to make life a bit better for all of us. If you have not yet done so, please take out your phone and record an up to one minute video. Send that video to us via the email hello mr president tv at gmail.com and our WhatsApp line is 0550-585832. If you can't send the video, you can text it to us. Let it be no more than 250 words of exactly what you're going through and why policymakers should do something about it. Let's take a look at the videos that we received this week. So that's the video that we saw earlier this week on social media. The place you're looking at is Sheshri Akatisu in the Western North region. Uh, and it was posted by the director of the Africa Education Watch, uh, Mr. Kofi Asare. So we're going to bring him on the line to really help us understand why these young kids are in a classroom that is not even fit for purpose. And the worst part is that that classroom is not even theirs. They are, they, are, they are just staying there because the JHS students are not there. If the JHS students were there, they would be studying under a tree. So this, the classroom, as you see there, it's not even good for the JHS students. But then these children who are in primary school are coming there because it's, it's available in the meantime. If they didn't have that, they'll be studying under a tree. Every single week for the past two months, we've been talking about the state of our education in this country. And when you talk about education, we need to look at the quality of education that you're getting. The environment you're studying under, if you are, if you are studying on a brick, how can you possibly concentrate on, on, on what the teacher is teaching? If you don't even have a desk to put your, your, your book on, to write properly, how can you appreciate what you are learning in school? If it starts to rain and the rain is going to disrupt what you're studying, how can you now thrive in that environment academically? And we all know that education is the one passport that will help all of us get out of poverty. But if people who need it the most, children who need education the most, have to deal with this, then the future will look bleak for them. If you have a similar thing in your community, please let us know. The hashtag is Breakfast Daily, and the WhatsApp line is 0550-585832. The many of my producers let me know that Kofi Asari is on the line. We will talk to him and find out more about exactly what's going on with this community, because it, it does not make sense that in this 21st century Ghana, we're in 2021, children will be studying in, 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 in the manner that they are studying in, sitting on bricks, that, that, that are not even fit for, for animals to sit on. The least they can get is a desk. The classroom size is a problem because that shouldn't be a, 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 that classroom for that many children. How are they going to get quality attention from their students and their teachers? How can they participate in class when they are, in, they, they are packed like that as if they are sardines 
So we, we really need to understand what's happening um, with, with this specific community in the Western North region. These are primary school children. The foundation you get for your education is crucial for the future that you will have. If you get the right foundation very early, if you're able to study in, a, in an environment that encourages you to concentrate, in an environment that welcomes you to actually want to be in school, you will thrive and you will excel. But if you find yourself in a place like this, there's no way that you can succeed. So uh, we're going to now take a look at the next video we received and then we'll come back once we have uh, access to Mr. Kofi Asari from the African Education Watch. Let's take a look at the other video we received this week. Yo, many nana amukro mhini aya wo sabro nu. My hini, sabro nu my hini adwanti hini nimi. Ampa. Let's say, mi jina hama amukro mai. Ah, se se no, ye mi kro no. A school day or honing in a swapper, and but I know what it formed the co school. And he said, They may care as me boar, I buy money pan for her, and but they are tossing me, you know, honorable a double, any DC, and but a ba, yo, a media so, a buffoon, yo, Bessie Sabreno, a dime bark or crowd, down crab a currency form, and but semi chantra, or money pan for her, and but say, say, near Bruno, I am Nibre, I ask him, and but. But my opinion is, my name is Obeyo. Ampara. So say a teacher for any now that teacher here. Ampara. So my name is Abre. I am a teacher. Ampara. I am in school. I am in B and T. Yo. The Mr. Omo. So my 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 name. I am in my name for. Ampara. I am in him for what? Sabrono. I am in him. I am in my name. Ampara. Now school day no. Ampara. I am in my name. Omo Mme Bosso, you are unfa. Ni aka no su nsi ho. Yo. E se no, mi nim se o si ade yo. Yo. Aku fu adu, mi nim se o si o ye. Na se se no, o ma mi kro na aja basa basa. Ampara. Nti MC ni DC no, omo eh ona bo adabo ni MC no, o ma ma mi kro no ada ada pan. Nti omo mo am me bo ame. Ampara na mi kro no MP. And that's in the uh, uh, for Anno in the southeast district of the Ashanti region. We played this video earlier uh, on in the month. We asked that we were going to talk to the DC because there are three schools in that area that are struggling. And I'm going to walk you through those three schools. The first one is a Sabonu Nyamibetre basic school. The second one is a St. Peter's basic school. And then there's the Aman Chrome DA basic school. All three schools are not well resourced. All three schools have class size issues, all three schools have challenges that prevent students from being able to achieve the academic goals and dreams. We, we, we've shown you all the three schools in the previous weeks. We want to get the DC on the line to ask the DC exactly what's going on, why these, these issues have not been solved, why it has to take the chief of the community to plead on behalf of the students, because everything that happens to the children, we will pay the price for in future. If they get a quality education, we will benefit. If they don't, we pay the price of the show. I showed you a video earlier that we received about a, a community, a school actually in the Western North region. We're going to watch that video briefly and then speak to Mr. Kofi Asari, who is the director of Africa Education Watch. Let's take a look. School year, I said, to my DA primary and JHS. Quality to say, and a senior, the only classroom crowd. Now, me, I want to say, JHS for no. I'm a fine, and I'm more than occupy JHS classroom. Classroom where we are JHS who, JHS one, JHS two, and I will say no. I'm more need dex, JHS one need dex. Can block say I should say I JHS one a class to see that the NMRM Ghana, Ghana necessity two class, NMRM Ghana, JHS four at the block so JHS one a fine, and class one high dia at the biase and the see that the Na mi na ya omadu na JHS for ma pan e na omaba be piem e wo ha enti o be occupy JHS for classroom temporary JHS for be school or some sign code be ase me no ka sensu o to enti nka ye bu sense JHS for wo ha e na nka sensu o yi bai nka kwalai e he e na o mo betena sensu ni to the holder na chese adisua 
any other tray and cosso for the whole day. Ghana, I then a young Cassaye, a home abrosa, and never want Panini a minister and a back school of Ruchi, Panini and Piano back school of Ruchi, President and my uncle school of Ghana. There before Coco, you feel a catchy so, yet they are caught Kemma. Ya are a sports up with this canaba, your bias, your damn papa one cry, yes, your damn papa oak massy, but be a young Coco, no, a free yano, a hot year, your father said, Yaya Bonnie, your boma bro, Bonnie Ben Pan and Kola will move away. On my yet Ghana for me. Okay. Now, man, you do pass. What if I am for our way? I so, Mr. Kofi Asari shared this on, on social media. He's the executive director of Africa Education Watch. Good morning, Mr. Asari. Oh, good morning and morning to your audience. Thank you so much for being with us. Can you tell us a bit about this issue? Because a young man seems very frustrated. Well, um, yes, I have the video of um, um, a community in the BRS uh, district, um, which um, has a very dilapidated school infrastructure. Um, the community, the school you see there is about a 30 year old school, so it's not a new school. Um, but then, decades of neglect is what has led to what we are witnessing. Um, it, it is not too much news within that district, and the and the border district will be out. So they happen to be one of the most deprived districts you know, in this country. Fortunately, these districts are. The, the basket when it comes to um, um, foreign exchange uh, agriculture. Um, it is actually a cocoa hub. And so I would have expected that being a good mine for the agri sector and, and, and in the forex sector, you know, um, basic infrastructure, i.e., education and health infrastructure, shouldn't have been an issue. Unfortunately, this school only uh, manifests the deep rural urban divide in basic education in Ghana, which has been the situation for decades. And uh, the earlier we have a deliberate strategy to deploy education resources equitably, the better um, in region in the rural urban divide in basic education. Now, how did you uh, come across this this problem? Well, we we work with you know we work with community level actors, we work with members of parliament, um, and, and other NGOs at the community level, and this is how we work. At the policy level, we engage policymakers on issues um, that are that are evidence from the community, and so. Forth. And we normally get this video from our community and members of parliament. For, for instance, this video is it, actually the empty hotel in roofing um, the shed. It, it, it wasn't even roofed. It was only roofed about November this year, last year. You know, and so we get this video and we use it more to more to support, you know, um, for, for such schools until um, government intervention to eliminate schools and like trees rich in such communities. And, and you mentioned that it's not just this school that is going through this in the community. Can you walk us through the other schools and the challenges that they oh, have in the district. Well? Yeah. In the district, Anyone yes. who knows Biawes, Biawes, Biawes knows that we are talking about one of the most deprived districts. Um, I believe the most deprived district in southern Ghana and one of the most deprived districts in, 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 in Ghana. And um, this, 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 is, this, this manifests the nature of education infrastructure in most of the communities in in in, um, in, in BR West. Um, and uh, so that's why I want us to look at this situation with, within the context of um, broad interventions that aim to either prevent the status quo or resolve the status quo and prevent sin from occurring in other communities. Because this is not a new community. This is not a new school. This is a 30 year old school, and all you have seen there is the junior high school block. Um, there are so many other communities um, in, 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 in that particular area where you find that there is a primary school, but without a junior high school. And so, what happens is that when students complete primary six, they have to commute between 10 and 12 hours every day to the nearest community where it's a junior high school. And if you look at the education sector statistics, 
That is where the highest level of dropout occurs. Bear in mind that close to 20% of students who come to this school are not able to complete this school. But majority, about half of those who drop out, drop out in primary six and junior high school one. Simply because there is no junior high school in the community. After primary, they have to work for miles every month, and then they drop out, especially the general. So, this, I mean, this. Hello, are you there? Mr. Sari, are you with us? Mr. Sorry, we will we will try and get a hold of you again because it sounds like we may have lost the connection, the signal to talk to you. But as he is explaining, the the community that's Bia West contributes so much to our national resources, contributes so much to the development of this nation as far as helping us get the cocoa that we need. Yet the kids have to deal with this structure. The MP has tried his best to to roof the the school for the students, but beyond that. What should the nation do to help these students? We're trying to get a hold of him to really help us understand the, 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 the struggles that these students will go through. He mentioned that 20% of the kids will drop out. Almost 50% will also drop out because they don't have access to a GHS. So if you compare what they are going through to other students who are probably in a better community, what chances do they have to actually rise out of poverty with education? Mr. Asare, welcome back. Yeah. Yes. So my question is, when you, you, you come across so many children across the country, when you compare what's going on in, 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 in Bia West with these students to other kids in other parts of this country, what are their chances and how important is this for us to fix this problem now so that they have a chance at really get, rising out of poverty and getting a good education in future? Well, um, as we discriminate economically and in the share of economic opportunities to these communities we actually restrict their opportunity of progression you know um to test that within the future ladder and um the, you know uh, um, no poor investment in, in, in education in rural area is that the learning outcomes that come to this community um it's very poor I'll give you an example. Prior to the introduction of this 30% quota, whereby students from public schools are admitted in the top 55 senior high schools, that's because they went to public schools. Um, prior to the introduction of that quota, when students were enrolling or applying to senior high schools, I'm talking about public school students, less than 1% of students from public schools were making it into the top five, top 55 student schools. Give you an idea. And if you look at the DEP pass rates, uh, over the past 15 years, it's been 30, 70, 70% percent pass um, from the urban area and 30% in the rural area. So if you find the top five areas, your chances of putting the DEP is 70% to begin with. And um, uh, that is why we keep coming on the fact that if we don't build a compatible system for deploying education resources, we will end up creating or sustaining the deficient system or inequitable system that we have built. And if your child is born in the rural part of this country, the opportunity for education development, transition and progression particularly is reduced by about 70 percent. Thank you, Mr. Kofi Asari, for being with us. We've run out of time. We'll get a hold of the DC. You mentioned briefly that the MP was trying to help the students. He roofed the sheet. So yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll follow up with him hopefully next week on exactly what the challenges are with getting these children the, the decent environment that but, they but, need but, to but, be. But, but let me quickly indicate that government has actually wrote out um, an initiative to eliminate about 5,000 schools in Macri. 
Okay. And then um, we have now put past fund. Mm -hmm. And then um, it's hoping to build about 5,200 schools, mm -hmm. you know, in areas where schools are kind of taking place and okay. the and other things. Thank you. Um, we are encouraging the private sector to donate to this fund because it is, it is relying on support from all, um, all of us to raise 3.5 billion to finance the construction of these schools in the, past, in the next five years. Okay. And I hope schools like this will have the opportunity of being a part of it, you know, within the next five years. By the we need to support that to survive mm -hmm. until we have the infrastructure. Thank you very much, and I'm, I'm sure they can find you on Facebook as well to, to reach out to you. His Facebook name is Kofi Asare. And our viewers, we've unfortunately run out of time, but we'll revisit this conversation next week because the future of our, our country depends on the quality of human capital that we have. And if our children are studying under this environment, you can only imagine what future we will have one day. Thank you so much for being with us for this edition of Breakfast Daily. My name is Jifa Ekea Ametam.